you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wisconsin. Thank you, Green Bay. Thank you. I'm so happy you're here. I'm grateful. And thanks to you, we're going to win this election on November 4th. We're going to carry the state of Wisconsin, and it's going to carry us on to victory in the White House. And I'm so happy and pleased and proud to be introduced by Governor Palin. But my dear friends, I can't wait until I introduce her to Washington, D.C. I can't wait. I can't wait. So, so let me offer a little advance warning to the big spending, greedy, do-nothing, me-first, country-second crowd in Washington and on Wall Street. Change is coming. Change is coming on November the 4th. Now, my friends, I've got to give you some straight talk. And I know you want it, and you deserve it. We need reform in Washington and on Wall Street. The financial markets are in crisis. Times are tough. I know that the events unfolding can be difficult to understand for many Americans. The dominoes that we have seen fall this week began with the corruption and manipulation of our home loan system. The reason this crisis started the reason this crisis started was the abuses that took place within our home loan agencies, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And within, our home loans, within our home loan systems, two years ago, I warned this administration and Congress that regulations fixed for our home loan agencies, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, needed to be fixed. They disregarded it or the special interests overcame it. But nothing was done. Senator Obama talks a tough game on the financial markets, but the facts tell a different story. He took money from Fannie and Freddie more than any other senator, but the Democratic chairman of the committee that regulates them. He, my friends, he put Fannie Mae's CEO, who helped create this <coughs> disaster, in charge of finding his vice president. While the leaders of Fannie and Freddie were lining the pockets of his campaign, they were sowing the seeds of the financial crisis we see today and enriching themselves with millions and millions and millions of dollars of payments. Remarkable. When I pushed legislation to reform Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, Senator Obama was silent. He didn't lift a hand to avert this crisis, and that's not change. That's what's broken in Washington, my friends. I've taken on the special interest. I've taken on my own party. I've even, from time to time, taken on my own administration, Senator Obama has never made the kind of tough reform we need today. His idea of reform is what his party leaders in Congress order him to do. We tried for bipartisan ethics reform, and he walked away from it because his bosses didn't want real change. I know how to make that change, and Senator Obama and this Congress is afraid of. I've fought both parties to shake up Washington, and I'm going to do it as President of the United States. Those same congressional leaders who give Senator Obama his marching orders are now saying, believe it or not, that this mess isn't their fault and they aren't going to take any action on this crisis until after the election. What? Senator Obama's own advisors are saying this crisis will benefit him politically. My friends, that's the kind of me-first, country-second politics that's broken in Washington, D.C. My, ap 
opponent, my opponent sees an economic crisis as a political opportunity instead of a time to lead. Senator Obama is in change. He's part of the problem with Washington. While Senator Obama and the Democrat congressional leaders delay action on the current crisis, we know what their plans are for the economy. Today, just today, Senator Obama's running mate said that raising taxes is patriotic. <laughs> raising, raising taxes in a tough economy isn't patriotic. It's not a badge of honor. It's just plain dumb. and tax increases that Senator Obama is proposing would kill even more jobs during tough economic times. I'm not going to let that happen. So, my friends, let me give you a little more straight talk about this election. In 47 days, just 47 days, you'll make your choice. Your vote will determine the next president of this great country that we all love. And here in Wisconsin, it'll be the difference. A lot of you have these economic challenges on your mind. So let's start here. A vote for me will guarantee immediate pro-growth action, tax cuts for America's hardworking families, strong support for small businesses, which are the backbone of our recovery and our economy. and an end to the outrageous, disgraceful, obscene pork barrel spending in Washington, D.C. It's going to stop. I will veto. This governor knows how to cut spending. She vetoed a half a billion dollars worth of pork barrel projects. Senator Obama has sought nearly a billion dollars in pork barrel spending, about a million dollars for every single day he's been a member of the Senate. <laughs> my friends, I'll veto every pork barrel bill that comes across my desk. I'll make them famous, and you'll know their names. You'll know every one of them. A vote for me will guarantee that the forces that have brought down our economy will be out of business. I will end the corrupt practices on Wall Street and backroom deals in Washington, D.C. I will hold accountable those responsible for the oversight and protection of consumers, taxpayers, and homeowners. A vote for Senator Obama will leave this country at risk during one of the most severe challenges to America's economy since the Great Depression. And that's straight talk, my friends. You see?